Well, I mainly spoke about the importance of coming together to build resilient communities, coming together the government, coming together special local authorities, but also the private sector, civil society and the people at large. Resilient communities are a necessary basis for resilient business and we have to incorporate resilience in business thinking. It's not about corporate social responsibility only, it's about a major critical factor in a world with distributed supply chains, in a world which is globalized, in a world which is urbanized. So we all have to stand together to solve these problems. You showed very beautiful images of uh, sparrows, I think it were, uh, in, in, in Great Britain. What, what did you, uh, what was your association with these uh, sparrow? We can, we can learn a lot from nature. Starlings, in the evening, they flock and they make a dance in the sky. Called murmuration. Murmuration because of the sound their wings make in the sky. And there is no hierarchy. There is no leadership. It constantly changes. This dance in the sky inspires them. It gives them not only a show. It gives them the necessary energy to survive a cold night and it allows them to chase their enemies. It's a kind of, as we call it, a network technology, a distributed network architecture which functions there. So, the empowerment of the edge, the empowerment of distribution is shown perfectly in, in this nature. And it's, by the way, also other examples, think about the human body, uh, how we work together, how limited the power of our brain is suddenly when the liver doesn't want to work anymore or anything else. So this also are distributed network architectures. And we should try to start working more with regards to how nature works in what we do as a human society. Uh, this is a thought that came out of the 1960s, I think. You, uh, you told me, where, where did it origin, this thinking about the images of nature and, and, and seeing that as a resilient social form? Paul Duran, a US scientist who worked for the Rand Corporation, studied in the early 60s uh, the resilience of the US telecommunication systems. He wanted to see how the US telecommunication system could survive the uh, first strike of the then enemy, the Soviet Union. And he clearly demonstrated that the distributed network architecture is by far more resistant and resilient than any kind of centralized or decentralized structure. I think that Baran's findings were the result of uh, close observation how complex processes in nature are currently managed. And I think it's a way of showing us that today we have the possibility through the technology and the evolution to start managing our own society after the same principles. Okay, um, now we're here at a summit, a UN summit, and, and that of course is based on a very hierarchical idea of uh, having leaders gathering uh, and then making a uni uniform decision that, that then will sort of trickle down. I mean, is there implicit in this sort of image of a much more network-based uh, logic also an alternative idea about organization and governance that you think? I think the networked approach will change in general governance models. I think that the classical way of hierarchical structures to efficiently manage processes is on a way on its on the end of its life cycle and that we have to see the role of international organizations and governments more as a guarantors or somebody who safeguards the playing field so that the distributed network can really deploy deploy its power. Under what conditions do you think it is indeed a possibility that the business community is now going to take the lead? For the business community it's a matter of survival to be able to have our activity in resilient environments. We have very distributed supply chains. If you take the example of Toyota, for instance, in Pakistan, that was almost put to zero for a certain period because of the floodings in Thailand, 
then you know why we have to invest in resilient infrastructures and in resilient communities. I heard a very nice example the other day of a gentleman who was high up in an earthquake safe building in Manila saying my building is earth safe, earthquake safe. Mm -hmm. But look out, the building opposite to me is not. So what if it falls on me? That shows why businesses should invest in the environment in their communities.